Hey, this is Kenny with All Digital Technology. I'm going to be giving you a run through of our fire alarm system at uh, Phase Four Gray Oaks today. <coughs> so this is one of our. This is the main master panel for this building. Um, we have a couple of features on here. You have a set of switches, each performing a different function. Our uh, top one would be for audio video disable. Um, if you have a sprinkler contractor coming in doing a semi-annual on flows or any kind of annual inspections, you can hit that disable button and it'll stop the uh, speakers and the strobes from deploying throughout the building. You hit panel silence, it'll stop the panel from beeping. Um, now at this point you can test any initiating device, it'll come in as an alarm or a supervisory but you will not get the notification throughout the building. We'll clear that. Um, same thing, we have one switch for the sprinklers. It'll disable any water flow or a sprinkler. Oh, it's an outgoing call. Um, we have one for HVAC disable, and then we have one that'll break it down floor by floor to where it'll put first floor in a test procedure, second floor, third floor. That way when you hit a device on that floor, your strobe will flash for 10 seconds, letting you know that you got the alarm and it'll clear itself out. So that should clear out. Okay. So every time after your panel um, receives a message, it'll have an outgoing call, letting the monitor and center know that's normal. Okay, let that clear out. Now, if you want to make a general, if you're going to do a test of the audio visuals and you want to announce it to the building let them know. You can pull your microphone here. You want to hit the all call button. Show, the, show me that button again. All call. Okay. All call. It. Yep. You hold your mic in. It'll make a pre-announced tone. Testing. Testing. That will give you a full enunciation throughout the building. You could, um, you know, let everybody know we're about to perform a test on the system, not to evacuate. Uh, you finish your test, hang the mic back up, turn your all call button back off, and everything's back to normal. Um, let's do that. I'll make a test. We will be testing the fire alarm system. Please do not evacuate. This is just a test. Thank you. So now I'm going to pull a pull station and we'll simulate a fire alarm. Attention. Uh, normally Attention. it would and just get depressed. So if this was a normal fire operation, um, the fire marshal doesn't want you to do anything until the fire department shows up. So you would get your standard, I don't think you guys are evacuating, but whatever your set procedure is, um, turns out to be a false alarm, you can come over. Alarm silence will stop the noise and then you can reset. As long as your device is still not an alarm, the panel will reset itself in a couple seconds. So now the alarm went away, it's calling out. Panel silence. And that should clear out. 
question, is this something that the staff here is going to do on a monthly basis to test the alarm, or do you guys come in here and do that? No, we would have a set contract for with the service company, whether it be us or uh, I believe Safe Tech, Safe Tech is doing the whole campus. But they would come in on a semi-annual or annual basis and, and perform a test. Um, so in the, a perfect world, no, no employee of this facility needs to ever kind of deal with that unless it's an emergency or something. The for the most part, test. right. For the most part, no. Um, your maintenance guy, you know, they might want to run if uh, they're going to have, uh, I don't know what your test schedule is for the fire pump. Uh, if that has to be tested maybe weekly or monthly, then they might make an announcement as far as that goes. But under normal conditions, most staff would never have to touch this. Um, you have any other questions on this? Are those? Okay. Yeah. You can, you can tell us what it is. You know, you so each floor, um, we have, these are the power supplies for the notification devices, all the strobes throughout the building. Each floor has one or two panels um, in the electrical rooms. These two supply this first floor, and we have one second floor, third floor, and so on up. Um, you should, there's really no user serviceable parts in here. They have uh, two batteries that should be part of the annual inspection, testing, and maintenance of the batteries. Let me find my key. So maybe every two, three years, the batteries would get replaced. Other than that, that's about it. All right, uh, I guess we can go to the front panel. Is, uh, <clears throat> even if any employee, say maintenance, like me, you would be, you definitely call monitoring service if you're gonna do anything. Oh yes, yeah. There would be labels so on the front of the- Can you raise this question? Because we couldn't really hear There's, <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm sorry. Put that into a statement or however. All right, so, I don't have the label on there if you but there will be a phone number and a label attached to the front of the panel right here that any time you do any testing or anything on the fire alarm sy system, you would call that number, put it on test, give them the account number, and then you could perform anything, you know, without worrying about fire alarm uh, trucks coming. All right, so this is going to be the main lobby entrance. This would probably be the panel that you guys would use the most um, if for any messages or anything. So this is an exact duplicate of our main panel in the fire command. The only difference that the switch for this page, microphone page, is actually gonna be this first one here. So for this one, you would hit your page. Same thing, push your microphone. Testing, testing. So now you can perform any messages or repeat anything that you want to be dispatched throughout the building. And make sure you turn the switch back off. Now one thing that is important, any switches that you turn on from a standalone panel, you have to make sure that you turn it back off. So if you come to test and you turn on the audio visible uh, disable button, you'll get troubles. But if you go to the other panel to try and turn it off, it won't, it won't work. So if you disable something from one panel, you have to make sure that you re-enable it from that same panel. So now everything should clear out. We get our outgoing message. Give that a second, that'll clear, and then we should be back to normal. But otherwise, we have the same functions, page, and then audio vi visible disable, flow switch disable, the uh, HVAC controls, and then we have our service groups for um, annual inspections of a floor-by-floor -floor basis. And that should really be it. Same thing, we'll have the phone number and account number on the front of this panel for calling the monitoring center. This is going to be our area of refuge system. We have telephones located in each stairwell. One, two, and three on the second through fifth floor landings. These will all be labeled in respect to which stairwell landing they will be. 
if there's an emergency and um, a handicapped person needs to get to an area of safety, they can go hit the call button from one of the stairwells. It'll ring down to this call box. If nobody answers it, it will get forwarded over to the guard shack at the uh, main campus. Um, you could also dial out to any stairwell. It's a two-way communication between it. Okay, so each device is, is labeled with its panel number, address, uh, and related to the system. Each pull station, each smoke detector. So if we pull a pull station here, let's put the disable button on, so we're not... So now we pull... 1402153. So we get a message, pull station, entry vestibule. If we hit details, it'll give us our address, 02153. The address of this box. Of that specific pull station that was pulled. Um, it'll be the same thing for every smoke, each device, smoke detector, pull station, flow switch has an independent address and each will relate back to its description of where it's at in the building. So, if a pull station does get pulled, you will need a key to reset it. Put the key in, open it up, reset your handle, make sure your switch goes back into the normal position, and close it up. You will not be able to reset the alarm until the device has cleared its uh, alarm state. All right, so our alarm cleared. I'm gonna re-enable the audio visible. We'll see all our disabled clear. We're back to our outgoing call, and then our panel will uh, clear itself out. Okay, so each elevator lobby is equipped with a smoke curtain in front of the elevators to prevent smoke from traveling back up and, um, you know, infecting the rest of the floors. So it's only activated by the smoke in front of the elevator itself. So we're going to simulate a fire. All right, so that's a normal operation if it senses smoke in front of the elevator. If somebody's in it and they're trying to come out as it closes, supposed to. Make a liar out of me. There we go. So it's a pressure sensor. You press it, it'll come up for three seconds. If, as long as the alarm is restored, it'll stay up. If the fire alarm has not been restored, it'll come up, give you time to exit, and then it'll drop back down. As soon as the fire alarm panel is reset, we can set the smoke and it'll automatically retract. You at the panel? Yeah, I just got down here. Everywhere I go, there's a locked door, so I'm almost there. All right, reset it as soon as you get down. So we're going to reset the panel. It should come up on its own. Um, as the fire alarm is tested annually or semi-annual, whatever is required in the contract, um, this would be a part of the normal testing features, uh, smoke control, elevator recall, and a run through of all the smoke curtains, make sure they're all operational, none of the actual curtain itself is damaged, and that the motor operates as it, as it should. So now the fire alarm panel is cleared, 
it has been restored. And if we close this back up, thank you. We're now back on normal operation. We have a smoke curtain located on every elevator lobby on the second, third, fourth, and fifth floors. Um, first floor is excluded. Okay, we have fire controlled um, hold open doors that will be shut in case of a fire alarm. Um, we have them on the second, third, and fourth levels. So we are in a normal state, the doors would be propped open. We're going to simulate a fire alarm. Dan, again, hit the pull station. So as soon as we get a fire alarm signal, our doors are going to close. I have the audio visual disable on so we're not screaming. But every hold open door, all the access control, the mag lock doors, um, they would all release on fire alarm. Again, you will not be able to reset the door until the fire alarm system has been reset. Go ahead, reset. But even with the doors closed, you can operate it with the normal handle. Yes, the handle will, will operate as normal. This is just to keep the fire rating, the two hour fire rating. Panel is clear. So our panel is reset. There's no alarm conditions. And then our door will, will stay. If for some reason it doesn't want to stay, you might just have to play with that a little bit. If it's not sitting on there properly, it might not want to stay. And we should be back to business. Okay, so we are in the CHL building um, of Morins Park. This is a different type of panel. This is our remote enunciator. This is most times what you would look to to see the status of the system. Right now, we have a system as normal. Um, if anything, uh, if an alarm or anything comes through onto the panel, it will be displayed as a direct duplicate here. And you could acknowledge and silence the panel from here. Password is 22. 22. So now if there was an alarm or a supervisory, that would give you the ability to silence it. Um, we can move on to the panel room. Okay, so this is our other panel type we have in here. All right, this one's a little bit easier to use than the other panel. We don't have any switches. Um, we have an acknowledge, our alarm silence, our panel silence, and our reset button here. If we get, I'm gonna pull a battery, cause a trouble. Okay, so we now have a, a warning that we have a battery trouble. If we were to have a battery, you know, voltage or the battery goes bad, we would get a battery trouble. So we could acknowledge it. So we're accepting the trouble and we could do a panel silence. It'll stop it from beating. So now we have a message here and we would have the same message on our, our remote enunciator in the corridor. So we're going to restore our trouble state. Give it another 10, 15 seconds. We should get our restoral and then our outgoing call. All right.
right, we got our alcohol and coal in progress, our trouble state restored, panel silence again, and it'll go through its message and it should go back to normal. Now, we could check the history on this. If um, we had a trouble overnight, but it cleared, we can go in, if you hit the center knob button, it'll bring you to your menu. Okay. So now, we'll go back. All right, we're at our normal, normal state here. Press the knob once. We can go to reports, history, history with text, until panel number one. You want to go to display, and then you can go through all of our troubles. It'll give you a date, time um, of any uh, trouble, supervisory, or alarm states. If you hit the center button, it'll bring you back. We have a page and microphone also, um, same as the other building. You would hit your all call button, press your microphone, hello, testing, testing, and it'll display a message throughout this building. Just this building. Just this building only, yes. All right, so we are in the bistro building now. This is our third panel related to this system. Again, this is our enunciator. Our system's normal. Password would be the same as the CHL building, 2222. That'll give you the ability to silence uh, an alarm. Um, now our panel is back in the maintenance room, so we can go back there, take a look at the panel. So this is our bistro panel. The same as CHL, same functions, acknowledge, silence, panel silence, and reset. Again, the account numbers and phone numbers will be labeled on all the front of the cabinets. And we have our same remote microphone. If you hit the all call button, hit your microphone, you could speak out. When you're done, hit all call, panel will reset, and um, we're back to it. Okay, we have two roll-down fire doors located on the garage, one going into the clubhouse entry and one going into the front lobby to separate the garage from the other occupancies. We have a heat detector located in front of each door. If this heat detector was to activate, it would drop down the rolling door. Again, once the fire alarm panel is reset, there's a control box located above this um, access panel. It would have to be reset, and then we could crank the door up. Um, again, once the fire alarm has activated, most times we won't have to worry about this other than for an annual inspection. All right, uh, we have stairwell three is where all of our sprinkler flow and tamper switches are located other than the fire pump room. Um, if any module goes off or any tamper switch, it would be stair three is where you would want to look. It'll say on the fire alarm panel, uh, first floor, second floor, third floor, and then each, uh, each floor has one tamper and flow in that stairwell. Other than that, we have the door hold opens on two, three, and four, which we went over. And then we have one power supply for our notification on each electrical room first through five. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up the fire alarm system. Um, thank you, have a good day.